Hi and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be creating this cute design for a t-shirt in DALI 3 using ChatGPT and then we're going to take it into Photopea and just do some little cleaning up and get it prepped and ready for potential print on demand use including removing the design from the background. So I'm going to start here by pasting in the prompt that I came up with for this. This was just uh, played around a little bit just to get this particular look. We might have to do a few regenerations to get the text right because it's got text in this. I've specified it saying morning brew and um, it's simple enough so that it should get it most of the time, but we might have to refresh it a few times. Vintage distress design. So there I'm, I'm dictating the style. So it's come up with a few, couple of designs already. So let's have a look. So let's have a look at the text first of all. Morning brew. Okay, so that's spelled correctly. The other one isn't Mung Brew, so let's leave that. Let's just look at this and see if it's done one I've asked. So Distress Vintage Look. Yes, it's definitely achieved that. You can see by all these kind of worn patterns. I have a cute cat. I wouldn't call that cute cat necessarily. It's not the nicest looking t-shirt design, to be honest. Um, but it's got the words Morning Brew, and it isn't a black background, mostly. And we'll be able to work with that. And I did this specifically because... I want to be able to make it as easy as possible to extract the design from the solid color background, um, which means we, when we send it to a print on demand service, it can just go on whatever color t-shirt and you won't have, have to have a solid block of color behind it. Um, but we could work with something like that. Now these aren't ideal. So what I do here is I'm going to click on the regen button to regenerate um, another couple of images. And what I'll do is I'll just pause the video now and I'll just see if I can get a good looking one within a couple of more generations so you don't have to sit here just watching and uh, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so it took just a couple of generations to get something I like. Let me show you the second one. So that's where we started. There's a bit of a spelling error on this and I just didn't really like that one. Second generation, which I did off camera. See, there's a messed up wording on this one um, and also this one. And then it just took me one more try to get something I really like, which is this one on the right hand side here. So the text is correct. Morning brew. It's got a really nice, cute looking cat icon there. It's got a nice symmetrical design that's just very suitable for a T-shirt. A couple of bits we don't want in it, but we can remove those in um, editing. So I'm very happy with that. So I'm going to download that file by clicking the button in the top left here. That's going to send it to my downloads folder for Chrome. And then I'll open it up in Photopea and I'll join you in there in a minute. Okay, so now we've got this file in Photopea. I'm just going to make some changes. But first, I'm going to duplicate the layer. So press Control or Command J to do that. And I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to convert it to a smart object. And that's just so we can do some adjustments to them and then it's non destructive. We can tweak them later. So, first thing I want to do is try and make this background more of a solid color to try and get rid of some of this patchiness, which will just make it easier to extract. So now that my file's a smart object, you can apply a levels adjustment layer directly to it by pressing Control or Command L, and it will bring up the levels adjustment layer, or sorry, the levels tool straight on it. And I'm gonna to go to the left-hand side of this top section, and we're just gonna pull this slider slowly to the right and that's going to darken all the blacks in the image, all the really dark areas. It's going to darken them further, which, as you can see, gets rid of those hazy sort of background and makes it pure black. And if we keep going too far, it's going to start eating away at the other pixels in the in the character and the design that are slightly darker. So we don't want that. So we want to stop at a point where it's somewhere like that. You can do the opposite with the highlight and take the point on the right hand side and drag it the other way. And that'll just brighten up the text. But I quite like the color and the subtle tones of this kind of off-white, creamy sort of color. It looks quite nice with the vintage look. So I'll press OK. So that's step one. Now, step two, we need to actually remove the black from the background. And like, in theory, I want this to go on a black T-shirt. But the reason why we can't just send the image like that to a print-on-demand company is... The color of their black t-shirts will not match how this black square would print and what you'll end up happening is you'll have a notable different color in a square shape printed onto the black t-shirt and it won't look like a seamless design it'll look like a design 
in a slightly different color black square which just looks really cheap so we're going to do that with an excellent feature in a photo p which is under filter other and it's color to alpha now i've already got black as my foreground color selected so you'll probably see a dramatic difference straight away if i click that oh let me just close that one mistake i made i've got the background layer turned on so you couldn't really see the difference so let me start that again go to filter other color to alpha now it'd be more apparent what's happened so it's removed all of the black tones in the image um, and made the background and made them transparent which is what we want now it's a bit difficult to look at at the moment but i'll put a temporary background behind it in a sec so you can see more about what it's done so let me just go and do that click ok and again because the smart objects we can come back to these and change them so just temporarily i'm going to throw a color fill adjustment layer behind this let's just put something bright at the start we're not going to put it on a red it's not designed for red background but i just want to do this so you can really see what's going on so anything that you can see red now is a transparent is transparent so you I mean you could print that on a red t-shirt but i personally don't think the, the combination of the colors looks great so let's double click back onto color to alpha and i'll just show you some adjustments we can make here so we've got a transparency threshold slider and as we pull that across you can see it's almost having the same effect as when we adjusted the levels point too far earlier it's taking those darker tones and just kind of blending them out and mixing them into the transparent area so anything that was like not as dark as the black but you know the next darkest pixels it's kind of blending them in which actually you could like it gives it more of a minimal look but it makes the cat look a bit more like some weird raccoon or something so for this example i'm going to leave those subtle tones in an opacity threshold at the bottom if we slide that the other way you'll see that's kind of doing the opposite it's um bringing those darker colors back in and making less of them transparent if you drag it too far you'll start to see some artifacts and some of the grittiness being forced back in so again be careful with that i quite like I quite like something like that just to bring a few more of the tones in like i said this will be on a black t-shirt but i'm just doing it on the red to just give you an example of um how the transparent element works so now we can drag this all over the place put it in all kinds of different color backgrounds and this is just a good example once you've got your image um like the color to alpha and it's taken out the background color now you can put a solid color layer below and you can just drag it all around and just give yourself an idea of what kind of t-shirt color it would look good on so it kind of looks good on this generally anything really bright it won't look good on because the color tones will get lost so we can play around see that looks pretty good anything around this kind of fairly saturated but dark color range seems to work quite well so again this could work on on any of these but i want it to be on black so this is just the visualization now i'm going to drag it to black because in reality what we would send to the um, printers or the print on demand company is that file which looks a mess but in in theory that's that's what we'd want to give them because that's cut out so that when they print that onto their black t-shirt it will match perfectly it won't be a black square on a black t-shirt because they can't print exactly the same black as the t-shirt itself it just doesn't happen so this is just the visualization this color fill layer to show us what we're looking at so we can actually see what we're doing but in reality this transparent version is what you'd send to get printed so a couple of other little things we wanted to take care of here and we can easily do now that this is a transparent layer is i want to just get rid of a couple of these little words here at the side that don't make sense so we can easily do that now by making a layer mask making sure that our Brush is set to black, our foreground color is set to black. Now we can literally just paint and, and mask those little bits out. And in fact, you know what, I don't really like these random little dots here. I quite like these three that are following the circle because they like nice and symmetrical. So let's get rid of those. Don't really like these little stars here. And because this is transparent on a um layer with a layer mask it's just super easy to just mask things out 
So I really like that. I'm really happy with that. And so I would now at this point upscale this image if it hadn't been upscaled already um, to a higher size and appropriate resolution. And then I would send that to the printer as a um, or the print on demand site as a transparent PNG file. But I'm not going to cover upscaling in this particular video because I just wanted it to be focused around creating the design and then editing it in Photopea. But that's just to give you a quick overview of how easy it is to create amazing designs in um, DALI 3 and edit them super quickly and efficiently in Photopea to make a print ready file that's going to look great. So thanks for checking out the video. Really hope you got value from this one. So I'd love it if you'd comment below if you want to see more videos like this. Like, of course, and the usual subscribe. And um, I'll see you in the next video for more.